Hello and welcome to another chancel chat from Christ Church Cooperstown. These informational videos that uh, we've been producing uh, during this time of finding every method we can to reach out with people and instruct um, and to be together during the coronavirus uh, lockdown that we're still enduring. My name is Dane Boston. I'm the rector of Christ Church. Um, and I had a great question come to me this week that speaks uh, not simply to um, uh, items of faith and theology, but to the architecture of the church. So that's why I'm, I'm coming to you from a different angle for this uh, chancel chat, where I'm actually outside the chancel, looking back at it, so that we can talk about one of the most um, interesting and obviously predominant architectural features of the chancel here at Christ Church and of many Gothic and Gothic revival churches. And that is the rood screen. Right? It's this large wooden screen that you can see above my head and behind me that separates the chancel, the place where the service is sung, where the officiant or celebrant and the choir all sit with the acolytes and Eucharistic ministers and basically everybody who's helping out with the, the, uh, the pr producing the liturgy, making the liturgy happen for the sake of the people up there, and the nave, um, which is where I'm standing right now, uh, which is the main body of the church. Now, Gothic revival churches are traditionally uh, cross-shaped. That is to say, if you went way above Christ Church Cooperstown and looked down at it, it would look like a cross. Um, the long part of the cross, the base of the cross, is the nave. Um, the transepts on either side include some additional seating, um, uh, but those are the arms of the cross. And then the head of the cross, the top of the cross, is the chancel, that space you can see behind me with the altar at the very top of the chancel. So dividing all of those spaces, right, dominating the middle of the church, is this feature that I've already mentioned to you called a rood screen. Now, first of all, we need to identify uh, the, the, the name itself, right? When I'm saying rood screen, I'm not saying R-U-D-E, rude, like something who's, you know, oafish or boorish or something like that. Um, it's rood screen, R-O-O-D. And that comes from an old English word that means originally a uh, pole um, uh, and that has come to take on a meaning or came to take on the meaning of cross, right? So when you hear talk of a rood screen, the reason it's called that is because of, let's see if I can point up there at it, the cross that is usually traditionally at the center uh, of a rood screen, right? That's why it's, it's called that. It's named that for that cross there. Now, why does it exist in the first place? Well, from a practical standpoint, we have to remember that at the time many Gothic churches were built, um, they would be the largest, uh, most solid, stable, and prominent buildings in the communities where they were constructed. The nave of the church, which in the, historically would not have included any pews, but would have just been a vast open area. You can see this in some of the great cathedrals of Europe, um, especially if they have movable chairs and they take them out sometimes. The nave is this big open space that would be uh, dry um, and useful uh, for all kinds of purposes beyond just congregating for worship. It's a place where business might be conducted, um, where people might walk and talk. Um, you might even see people bringing in animals to buy and sell. There are stories about that uh, down through the centuries. The nave was busy, uh, noisy, sometimes kind of smelly because of all the, the, the common people who were coming in that, that way um, in an era before people cared a lot about their personal hygiene. Um, and it was, it, was a, it was a public space. So over time, it became clear that it'd be useful to, to separate the space where the services were being sung on a daily basis, uh, morning and evening, and in a monastic setting, you know, seven times, eight times a day, from the nave, which is open to the public, available at all times for all kinds of purposes, not all of them terribly holy. So there was a screen erected, and in some English cathedrals, you can see the screen is very thick. In some cases, you know, many, many feet thick, a, a solid stone screen that separated the place where the holy work of the liturgy would take place from the nave where, yes, on Sundays and feast days, the people might gather, um, but which during the week was a sort of common, you know, common space being used by everybody uh, for all kinds of reasons. So the screen had a practical service, uh, purpose then of um, d uh, designating, separating, and even protecting the holy work being done at the altar and in the choir stalls from the common work being done out in the nave. 
It also, of course, has the architectural benefit of highlighting, by, the, by virtue of the root on top of it, the crucified Christ at the very center of our worship. I said architectural benefit, I mean to say theological benefit. Right? This architectural feature tells us something very profound about the, the centrality of Christ crucified to the Christian faith and life. Now here at Christ Church Cooperstown, where um, the, the root screen is very beautiful and open, it's not as if it blocks our view of the altar uh, or of the choir or the officiant, um, it has a symbolic purpose of, of reminding us as we come forward to communion through the central archway under the crucified Christ that it is by the blood of Jesus that God draws us near, that we may be refreshed at the altar. Um, our setup, our, our de uh, decor, has the added benefit of superimposing the crucified Christ on the beautiful image of the ascending Christ over our altar. It's a little hard to see now, but if you go to our website, the first photograph you'll see on the main uh, front page, the home page, is uh, a, a wonderful reminder of how the crucified Christ, in, in our context here, stands, stands um, directly in line with the ascending Christ behind him. So that as we come through the crucifixion, we are given this glorious uh, image of Christ's glorification um, as we come to kneel and receive Holy Communion. So there's an architectural history that has a very practical purpose, um, but there's also a theological richness and depth that comes with the rude screen. One final note, you notice that Jesus is not alone up there on the rude screen. On either side of him, let's see again if I can <laughs> point and, and understand where I am, um, we have two figures, and traditionally on a rude screen, those two figures are the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. John. And that carries us back to the account we have in John's Gospel that after all the disciples have fled, um, only one remains with him. And that is the disciple whom Jesus loved, whom we interpret to mean John himself, and his mother, um, and, another, and many other women who stayed there with him. And that gives us one of Jesus' last words from the cross when he looks to his mother and he looks to John, his beloved disciple, and he says, woman, behold thy son, um, son, behold thy mother. Um, this is a, a, a tender moment at the foot of the cross, and we commemorate that, we remember that um, in perpetuity, you know, forever, by having Mary and John on either side of the crucified Jesus. One last thing I'll note, I know that's, that would be the last thing, but there's actually one final detail. If you were here at Christ Church and able to look at our root screen very carefully, you'd notice that while the, Jesus on the, cross, the figure of Jesus on the cross is obviously crucified, his hands and feet are pierced, um, his, his, his body is wrapped only with a simple loincloth, He's, he has all the humiliation of crucifixion there present, except the crown on his head is not a crown of thorns, um, it, is a, it is a beautiful, glorious, kingly crown. So that even there, as he's being crucified, we are reminded of the ultimate triumph, the ultimate victory over sin and death that Christ is accomplishing on his cross and his authority over all things in heaven and on earth manifested at this, his coronation, which is what his crucifixion really is. So we have a lot that's going on at our root screen, in addition to all the beautiful wooden tracery you can see on either side of it. Um, uh, this was not an original feature of Christ Church. It was installed with the chancel that we now have um, in the early 20th century as a memorial to William Cooper, the founder of Cooperstown and um, the, the, the founding uh, uh, land grant horror of the, the, the property on which Christ Church stands. Um, so we have uh, 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 many, many meanings attached to this wonderful architectural feature uh, and it's just part of the beauty of our church. So thank you so much for that great question. Um, and I hope you will keep them coming. If there's